What's going on guys, Zach and Kate here, and today we're talking about why I picked up a camera that is over five years old, and that is the Sony A7S Mark II. Now, I know the Mark III just came out not too long ago, but it has a price point that follows that. It is around $3,500 for just the body, and I'm not looking to pay that. I know a lot of content creators are using that, and it's an incredible camera, but for me, what I need to do, I think it's just slightly overpriced, and I think the A7S II is the better value right now. Now, I do wanna make a disclaimer. I am a musician first and foremost, but I do use cameras quite often, both for these YouTube videos and to shoot work for client. A large majority of my income comes from camera work. So I need a camera that was gonna keep up with what I have to do, but also, be good enough for the client. You could get by shooting a full commercial for a small brand on an iPhone. However, your pay is gonna reflect that and a lot of the times clients are gonna turn you down if you say, I'm gonna film it on my iPhone because then they're like, well, I have one too, why would I do that? It's sad because these cameras are great, but unless you're getting paid by Apple or some kind of mobile company, there's a good chance that you are not gonna get the price you deserve if you're filming with an iPhone. Now this camera you can pick up used for around 1200, I think new, it's still selling for around 1600, but that's really good because before the a7S III came out a few months ago, this camera was still selling for like $2,600. So it's been heavily discounted ever since the S3 came out. And I honestly think it is the bargain pickup right now, even over the a7 III, which yes, does have better autofocus, but it is about $500 more still. This thing is still a low light beast. I think the only camera of this form factor that could beat it out in low light is the a7s3 this has never really let me down yes it is a little bit slower to focus but i mean i've shot a couple youtube videos for this channel on this camera on autofocus and it was able to nail me just fine so as long as the lighting is good it's going to be able to pick you up decently now this is a 12 megapixel camera which is why it is so good in low light but a lot of people fear that 12 megapixels will never be good for photos and the reality of it is as long as you're not blowing them up like massive, you're really not gonna know. It's all about your perspective to the image as well. When you're driving past a billboard, typically that image is gonna be about maybe five megapixels just blown up really big, but since you're so far away, it looks normal. So yes, if you print out a big photo and you're trying to pixel peep, you can see some discrepancies, but when it comes to posting on Instagram, a website or anything like that, you're hardly going to notice a difference. I mean, if you have a trained eye, you'll notice it, but it'll get 99% of your photo needs done unless you are a professional photographer, which at that point, if you're wanting the highest resolution, you're probably not going with this, or you could just pull your iPhone out of your pocket and take a picture with that. Now, I do wanna bring up one more point about this camera that I mentioned. I am using it for client work. If you are looking to shoot just YouTube videos with this camera, you honestly don't need this. And there's cameras out there that are gonna perform better for cheaper, for at least for what you need to do. I like this because I like full frame, I like having low light, and there's a good amount of lenses out for it. But if you're someone who's just shooting YouTube videos, I highly recommend going with just like a Canon M50 or the A6000 series, even the Fujis. I mean, heck, this video right here is being shot on my iPhone 12. So you, this is overkill for a lot of the stuff I do, but I needed to know that I could have it when I needed it. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about some of the main benefits of this camera. As I mentioned before, it is a low light beast. This thing can practically see in the dark. In fact, I walked into my bathroom shooting at F3.5 and just cranked up my ISO, and this is the image I was able to get from that. Just look how clean this is. This is ISO 64,000, and just for reference, just for reference, here's my iPhone crazy. It is full frame as you can see here and full frame has a lot of benefits including letting in more light which helps to its low light performance as well as giving you better depth of field in bokeh. That is the separation between you and the background. Full frame is always going to have an advantage there. It shoots 4k uncropped with no pixel bending and again because of that low light performance it gives you one of the cleanest images even at higher ISOs. It's also an E-mount camera. The E-mount system is probably, in my opinion, 
the best lens and camera system there is for mirrorless cameras. And the reason I think E-mount is so good is because you can get into the E-mount system at any price point, really. You can start off with the A6000 series, which is their crop series cameras, and any lenses you buy for this will fit on your E-mount full frame, which means there is a huge benefit to getting in on a camera like this early. That way, all of those lenses you buy will still work for you when you upgrade. And speaking of lenses, the lens I options very wildly depending on what price point you can get in. Sony has opened the E-mount system up to third parties as well. There's brands such as Rokinon and Samyang, basically the same brand. They have cheaper lenses that are actually pretty dang good, especially if you're looking for a prime with a fast aperture, which is gonna let in the most light. And there's Tamron, which has probably the best value you can buy for the E-mount system with the 17 to 28 and then 28 to 75. You can cover that full focal range for the cost of one Sony G Master. There are also lenses from Sigma, who I actually got to use the 24 to 70 2.8, and that is a just dream of a lens that comes in at half the price of Sony's lens. And then you also have Sony's lenses. Sony G Master, some of the best lenses in the industry, but even their entry level lenses. This is the 50mm 1.8, their version of a Nifty 50. It's a pretty good lens. It's only like 150 bucks used. And then even the kit lens that you can get with most of their cameras is decent. And I actually use this for a lot of my videos I shoot in here just because I like the 28 millimeter aspect of it. But I will say that I do have more lenses that I end up using for the bigger shoots. For something as a walk around or vlogging lens, that's a very lightweight lens. F3.5 is an F2.8, but it's not that big of a difference. And you could pick that lens up used for like two to $300. So when it comes to the Sony E-mount, there is a lens out there for you, depending on what you need to do, what you need it to do, and what your price point is, whether it's for the A6000 crop sensor series or the A7 full frame, Sony's got you covered. And now with the A7S II in particular, there are a couple of downsides. And that actually brings me to the final reasons I got this camera, it's downfalls. It might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but I wanted this camera because it's making me a better filmmaker. Before I was shooting YouTube videos on a Canon SL2, I did a couple of events with it as well. Upgraded to the Canon M50 shooting YouTube videos, did a couple of commercials with that. But what I realized there is, once I dialed in my aperture, shutter speed, everything, the camera did everything else I needed, which is great but I never really even understood why people were getting mad about like lenses that have focus by wire, like what focus pulling was, because I would always just tap the screen and they're like, it's great, but it doesn't help you learn as a filmmaker. Whereas this, this can get you some of the best images possible, but you have to know how to use it in order to get them. A lot of people complain about the autofocus on this. To me, I think autofocus was a crutch I was leaning on, and this is helping me learn the actual fundamentals of filmmaking when it comes to pulling and racking focus. There's also the battery life that a lot of people complain about, saying the battery is too short, but what it has done for me, it has allowed me to really focus on getting the shots I need to get and not overshoot. It's always better to overshoot, but I found that I had Say for like a 10 minute YouTube video, I'd probably shoot about an hour's worth of footage just because I ended up rambling on. And with the one battery on this, it wouldn't really last that long. So it really made me be more concise in my storytelling and make sure I'm getting the point across. And finally, the fact that there is no flip out screen. This is one that I actually wish I could take back and have a flip out screen, which is why the A7S III is so attractive to most people. But at the same time, it's really made me learn how to dial in my settings before recording. Beforehand, I would put the camera down, start filming, and if I didn't like it mid-film, I could just tweak it from here because I could see what's going on. It was things that I never really paid attention to beforehand. I would just kind of set it up once I got it, move it, record, which is great if you're trying to get footage out quick. But if you wanna learn how to be a real filmmaker, there's nothing like going back to an older camera to force you to learn those steps that the people you're watching now had to take. So for me, when it comes to filmmaking, I look up to people like Matty Hapoya, Peter McKinnon. Those guys have been doing it for a long time and they learned the fundamentals of how to use a camera, how to do all of this stuff before the camera started doing it for you and that's why their stuff is so good.
So yes, this camera is old. Yes, it can get pretty pricey. And yes, there are better cameras on the market. But if you're looking at creators who have used this camera before and you've seen just some of the most amazing images from them, for instance, James Matthew is just an absolutely incredible filmmaker and he used this camera religiously before retiring it to move on to something better. I am still in the process of learning how to make stuff with the tools I have. And so that's exactly why I picked this up because it's going to make me better. It is true that gear does help in the creative process, but it does not create the process for you. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.